Hands I have been redeemed to do His will, my highest price since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. I have a home prepared for me since I have been redeemed, where I shall dwell eternally since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. All right, come unto me, 471. Hello? Oh, what I said. You said come unto me. All right, what do you got? We'll do that. We're going to count your blessings instead? Oh, never mind. Come unto me tonight. We'll just do the one that's on page 471. How about that? Which is count your blessings. Here we go. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be as the faithful Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many See what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Bet you can't do it. Amen. Good afternoon. Does anybody need comfort in their life? Not to be comfortable, right? But sometimes things happen and, and uh, we need the comfort of God in our lives. I'd like to share with you 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 3 through 7, where Paul, the Apostle Paul, speaking to a heartbroken and praise God repentant congregation in Corinth, he says this, blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort, 
who comforteth, comfort, comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Our Father in heaven, we... We rejoice in your comfort. Not that we should be comfortable, Father, because we know that your word promises us that tribulations are to come. And you tell us to rejoice in our tribulations. Father, because those tribulations work patience in us. But we praise you that as the, the sufferings, as the tribulations, as the trials abound, so does your comfort towards us. And we know that your word promises that as the day nears that our Savior returns, that those sufferings, those tribulations, and those trials are sure to increase. And so we need that comfort so much more, Father, that from it we might find great strength and great hope that by that we may continue the essential work that you have called us and sent us to do. Father, and I pray that through your strength, through your comfort, we might remain faithful until we hear that shout, we hear the voice of the archangel, and we hear the trump of God sound. The dead in Christ rise. We which are arrive and remain will be caught up together with them, and so shall we ever be with our Savior in the air. And as it says that we should comfort one another, with those words, Father. Keep us strong, keep us faithful. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We do have a few more uh, um, of the missionary reports to offer, just three more, I believe. And so I'll go ahead and call each of those up, and you'll, you'll speak in the order in which I call you. We'll have Brother Gilbert Hollins uh, first. Following him, I think Brother Ryan Johnson is going to speak on behalf of Brother Joby Jones and the Grace and Truth. And then following that, uh, Brother Paul Hurth has a uh, video to share. So, Brother Gilbert. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Oh, it's truly a blessing to be a part of worship. Ain't that something? When you come together with your brothers and sisters in Christ and, 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 and agree on Jesus. Agree on Jesus. There's nothing better in the world to agree on than Jesus Christ. And um, I'm, I'm up here. Um, it's a privilege to be up here and speak on the behalf of Get to Know Jesus Missionary Baptist. As we all know, um, they start, um, Pastor Marvin Wiggs, who's been a mighty man of God and showed his diligence and his service to God, um, they started off as, um, as um, what is it, um, I forgot the name of it. It's going to come to me because I got comfortable with getting to know Jesus. But they started off with another name at first. New Beginnings. Thank you, brother. That brother Sharp. New Beginnings Missionary Baptist. Um, and the purpose for them changing that name was because um, there were a lot of missions that were in that location or in that area. So they came up with the name of Get to Know Jesus Missionary Baptist so that they can know that they stand different. They're not the same as everybody else, but they're standing on the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I definitely commend them for their efforts. God has been working with them in a mighty way still. Um, for, for us here that are in, um, in the Central Valley, he's come, he's came recently and um, did some deputation work and, and came and visited some of the churches and everything like that. Galilee is still in full support of this brother and the mission work that he is doing. We're thankful to God for how he is using him in a mighty way. So let's continue to keep um, get to know Jesus Missionary Baptist in your prayers and that the Lord continue to use them in the Raleigh-Durham area and of, of North Carolina. They've been doing a mighty work. As a matter of fact, plans are coming soon um, for me and possibly someone else to go out and pay the brother a visit and show support. As I was sharing with one of the other brothers, mission support is not just us providing funds financially. 
support goes, it's a broad scale when it comes to support. So for us to be there physically and to show that support, to labor with our brother while he's on that mission field, it, show, it shows a, a, a huge advantage in regards to what it means by us coming together in prayer to the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of when, um, when Peter and many others were, were, were in prison, especially Peter, in the book of Acts when he was in prison, it said that many gathered together in prayer. Many gathered together in prayer, and they were able to see the power of Almighty God because they gathered together, and what it brought to their faith was increase to their faith, and, and it brought increase to their hope. So let's continue to keep them in our prayers so that we can see that increase. Amen? Amen. Amen. And also, please continue to keep um, Pastor Douglas Knox in your prayers. Um, he's currently um, in, a, in a rehab facility. He said to keep him lifted up in your prayers, but he also told me to give you a word of encouragement. And for you that know Pastor Knox, he's not going to let me get out of there without sharing a word of encouragement. He said to stay on the course. Amen. Keep the faith. He said stay on course. Don't let anything. We're going to face afflictions, he said. Stay on the course. We serve a living God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good afternoon. Uh, Brother Joby was here this morning and his intent was to speak to you on behalf of what is going on in Grace and Truth, but uh, uh, has some sad news this morning um, that uh, Sister Jasmine, his wife, her oldest brother passed away this morning. And uh, so I ask you to pray for the family and he went home to comfort her and so pray for this and pray for the family too uh, during this time but I want to speak to you just a little bit about uh, grace and truth and uh, things that are going on there um, some good things some exciting things I believe that uh, Denaire Missionary Baptist Church has been uh, their sponsoring church for about approximately eight years now um, and uh, we're excited so I've been a part of this work for about a year and a half, and it, it's been a blessing. Um, but I will say it does take work, as uh, Brother Gilbert said. And uh, over the last year and a half, we have been revamping uh, our commitment to our missionary, and it's been encouraging on both sides. And so we're looking forward to seeing what God has in store and prepared for uh, not only Grace and Truth Mission, but also Denaire Missionary Baptist Church, because we are partnering together. And it is a blessing uh, to uh, be able to do so. Um, and so that was one of the first things that I wanted to even just share is the importance of knowing what you're getting into when you, when you are starting not just a mission but organizing a church. It takes work. It takes effort on both sides. And so uh, we talked about that in our men's uh, workshop about the, uh, the importance of organizing churches. Know that it takes work. Know that it takes uh, work on both sides to get the job done. So stay encouraged. Don't leave it just to your pastor to do it. Do, church, get behind it. Church, support it. And then also uh, the missionaries, too. Do, do their job. Amen? And so we work together to get this done. For all things work together according to God's purpose. And so... Um, Kind of where did I, like I said, I wasn't intending to speak. To, I was hoping that he would because he wanted to, he didn't have anything written down because he's like, I want to speak from my heart. And so I thought about some things to, uh, to say, but I'm just going to read what he wrote to us this last month. So hopefully this will help with this. He says, greetings to you in Jesus Christ. This is truly a season of testing. We have seen God work in ways like never before, and yet it still seems as if we have not yet to find our season of stability. Uh, he has pushed us farther than we thought possible. To be honest, he has launched us out into the deep to the point that we have no choice but to trust in him. His power has been displayed in the messages and in the moving in the hearts of the people. Pray as a majority of our people are praying for finances, jobs, establishing businesses. But the struggle of getting these things off the ground is one that we are all too familiar with. Trusting the Lord will provide for us as well as for them. We have had over uh, 30 first-time visitors this last month. And a few more have been coming back in the last couple of weeks. Uh, saying that they were able to be fed there. That's important, amen? You know, go to church not just to, for a social hour, but it's to be fed from the Word of God. Our outreach team is doing a great job canvassing the area, 
Uh, how do we measure the impact? It is, the confession, is it the confession of faith that we have heard people share, or is it the lives and the souls of people who continue to come back and serve alongside us? Who is ready to grow with us? We at Grace and Truth are proud to serve everyone who is willing to walk through these doors and fellowship with us. Our attendance has been good, with an average of 30 to 40 people on a Sunday afternoon. But what I have become more aware of over the last uh, few weeks is our online presence. It doesn't seem as though we have a lot of people on our live stream, but I have been to many places and I have been told that I watch your services online. And this gives me hope. Uh, I pray that those online find their way into the sanctuary to fellowship with us. And I do thank God for the social media tool. Like I said, it is a blessing if used in the right way. And so uh, as the Denaire Missionary Baptist pastor and us being the supporting uh, church of grace and truth, I ask you to pray for Brother Joby, pray for Sister Jasmine, uh, not just pray for their family this moment, but also pray for this uh, mission. And uh, we are envisioned to uh, organize into a church one day. That was, probably, that was one of my first questions I asked. I told him I don't want to be brunt. When I, uh, uh, when I uh, ask this question, but I do want to know, how can we get to the next step? What's it going to take? And, uh, and so we are in discussion of that, too. Uh, but again, like I said, we just started revamping our commitment to him. And so you pray for us, pray for Brother Joby, and uh, pray for this work of grace and truth here in Fresno. Thank you. My name is Paul Hurth. I'm a member of the Landmark Stockton Church. We've got a little video, if we can. And uh, then just real quick, I have a free book for the first 15 callers. No. <laughs> Let me just share. This is a quick presentation of some of the things that we're doing as a result of the ministry through the Landmark Church in Stockton. I'm so thankful for our God that is in his wonderful grace the great men of the past that you know their names, you know them. They were solid missionary Baptist preachers that poured into my life, poured the truth in and helped disciple me. And now my goal is to help others. You may know of my terrible sin. Before that, Sylvia and I always lived by faith, but I had gotten away. And you know, I found out that I had a love problem. I did not love the Lord like I should. But you know, those times taught me to be open and honest, to be honest with my wife. And I wanna be open and honest with you. If you have any questions, I want you to ask questions. But during those 18 years in prison, we saw many men come to Christ, 12 or 1300. I was given great privilege of being able to take charge of the chapel services for the chaplains. And let me just say, I never had to compromise the word of God or what we believe. And in one year, we saw about 200 men come to Christ. Brother Harold Williams of the Macedonians helped send us some literature, especially some discipleship. And we began to take those 200 men through discipleship. And then the next year, we saw over 500 men come to Christ. The impact was so great that we could no longer meet in the chapel. We had to meet out on the prison yard. And can you imagine having up to 700 men sitting quietly, peacefully on a prison yard, singing together, praying together, listening to God's word. It had a great impact. As a result of that, we started something called the School of Ministry and Brother Dwayne Hopper back then of the Tulare Church helped us to further educate these men and prepare them into, for working in some of our churches. Upon my release, my daughter, suggested that I do a podcast to help reach some of those men. We did, and it's called the schoolofministryresources.org. And some of those men continued to check it out. But I wanted to just share with you how that has opened up a whole online presence for us. And I would just say this, because there's over 3 billion people a day that look at YouTube, I think the Apostle Paul would be on YouTube, just my opinion. Let me just share with you how that story begins and what it's come to. 
So we started this podcast to try to reach men that had gotten out of prison. My daughter gave us this idea. The Landmark Church has been so supportive, and this is where we've done most of the lessons and most of the teaching. But our purpose was to reach these men that had gotten out of prison. And then we have another thing that has, of course, happened, that now we have almost 8,000 listeners that are coming from around the world. So that's been something that we've just been amazed at. And that was certainly unconsidered. We didn't think about how that might have happened. So here's the order of listeners, the most in each country. And by the way, this also tells us of the repeat listeners. So we're not just getting the listeners that listen one time or two times, but they're listening over and over and over. These statistics, by the way, are just for the last two years. I wasn't able to find the statistics that went back four years that we've been doing some of this podcast. But I just was amazed at how people throughout the world are hearing about the School of Ministry resources and why they continue to tune in and listen to this Bible podcast. Then we've also had the hope and the idea because so many of our churches now have had difficulty finding pastors. So we've launched out with some websites to help our churches that are without pastors to keep the doors open and keep going. So it's called Small Church Survival or pastorlesschurches.org. That's what we've been doing in order to help churches just like the Stockton Church has been a long time. You can see the website, kind of what it would look like when you go on there, and you will see there's a number of different helps that are available. So by the way, all the material is free. We have downloadable books. Some are home Bible study called The First Steps. That book talks about in a home Bible study, the first lesson would be, is the Bible credible? Then who is Jesus? What did Jesus do? How can we have eternal life? It's only 28 pages. You can download that and you can print that up and then start doing home Bible studies. The purpose is to lead someone to Christ as a result. We also have a book that's available, downloadable, the Small Church Survival Book. That will give you ideas of evangelism, how to clean the church, how to do all types of ways of reaching new people and what should happen in case the church doesn't go on? How do you close out the church or maybe merge with the sister church? Something like that. All kinds of various ideas and thoughts to help in those areas. As well as to keep the doors open, there's some video sermons, video lessons, PowerPoint lessons. Some of these are still under construction, but we've got loads already on the website. My heart is to help see our churches continue to carry out the Great Commission, which is exactly what the Lord has for us. That's our purpose, that's our goal. So this is also something that a church can use to help evaluate where they wanna go, what they wanna be doing, how they wanna be reaching the lost. Because the Great Commission is that truth that is on the forefront if we are not leading people to Christ, if we're not baptizing and discipling them, our churches will die and they will die slowly. That's been our concern, that's been our heart, is to help churches grow and reach people for Jesus Christ. And so we did one other thing. We started a website to help direct on all of our online presence, and that's called BibleLandmarks.org. As you look at that website, and it will direct you to six different sites that we have online, from YouTube to uh, the podcast and the various websites. One of those websites that we've started is Parenting Well. This is something that helps parents with parenting issues, and of course, we have used the scriptures, especially from Proverbs, to help 
assist parents. And I'm so thankful that in our years that our children have been successful. We have three adult children, married, successful in their marriage, successful as you might consider in life, but they're raising their children to love the Lord Jesus Christ and trying to uh, train them up because we homeschooled our children. They're homeschooling their children as well. This website will help in just simple ways for saved and unsaved people, but it's to bring them to a place where they would understand how to raise children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. When you look at that website, that's what you're going to see, raisingwell.org. In 30 years of law enforcement experience, and as you know, having spent 18 years in prison, this is a website with practical advice, not legal advice. I was able to fight my case all the way from the trial court through the various state and federal courts. I got myself into the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And then because so few cases are taken by the U.S. Supreme Court, my case was heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. So I have much information here from hardtime.info to help you from anywhere from getting a parking ticket, a traffic ticket, all the way to doing time in prison. That's what hard time info is. And mainly it is with one point, one purpose is to get your thinking corrected. And there's only one way to get your thinking right. And that is by coming to Christ as Lord and Savior. That's our whole purpose and our singular purpose when you find yourself in trouble with the law, this is how you're going to come and meet our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a look at that website when you find in yourself in trouble with the law. And so Bible Landmarks will give you that launch to take you into all of those various areas. God has provided everything that we've needed to put these together. We need your prayers. We are asking for your prayers in that whole area. God bless you, brother, and thank you. <laughs> I didn't want to do that, but I have cards, and I have a couple of the books if you want. Thank you, brother, and I meant to cut that down more. You did tell me seven minutes. Sorry. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you to uh, each of these brethren for uh, sharing how God is working in each of your ministries. God is not done working. Amen. Even in the uh, People's Republic of California, <laughs> God is still at work. Amen. And souls are being saved. Uh, churches are being, uh, are being built and, and growing, and there's still a need. And so thank you to each of those who have shared. Uh, at this time, we're going to go into some reports. I'm going to call up uh, Brother Kevin Parsons to share the, well, maybe. I'd have to go a little out of order. I don't see him at the moment. Um, so probably in the back. So we'll, we'll have uh, Brother Kevin <coughs> Parsons share the CMD report as soon as he is able. Um, there he is. There's my brother. KP. <laughs> I'm sorry? We're ready right now, so go ahead and come up. And then uh, following that, we'll get into some committee reports. And so uh, for the state ladies, we'll, uh, we'll have Sister April Gonzalez come up after that, uh, followed by Brother Ed Robinson for History and Archives. Good afternoon. Wow. My goodness. It's a good thing you all were saved. That's all I can tell you. So uh, we had a very a good CMD meeting yesterday morning, and a lot of the participating churches were there. And obviously, I know a lot of them uh, participate weren't able to be there. And so 
I do want to just uh, share a little bit from the report, not much, but um, I would like to state before I read those things to you that um, over the years, um, the ministry had several different funds. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it. Several different accounts. Money that would come in monthly, quarterly from you all went into one account. And then when, you know, a bad situation would happen and a church would disband or something like that and they would sell their property and they would send us, you know, $100,000, $150,000, we put that in a different account. And then every quarter we would take some of that and put it over here with what came in to try to increase the blessing for whoever the receiving church was. And obviously, um, you know, the demands are high. Inflation has hit us once again in a most dire way, and so everything is expensive nowadays. There's, you're not getting anything for cheap. Um, but I wanted to tell you that those funds are gone. They have been dispersed over the last 18 months or so. So literally, the only monies that are available now um, are whatever comes in from your church uh, monthly or quarterly, however you choose to support. So I want to encourage you uh, that if you're not participating in CMD, please do so. Uh, and also, if you are, maybe consider uh, increasing the amount of your support. Um, there's plenty of churches in the room today that if I asked could stand and testify about the blessing of CMD um, and how that it has helped churches that don't have the fair financial wherewithal to upkeep their building and do major repairs. We saw pictures this morning from chapel builders and, and others, and there was pictures yesterday from Orville, some of the work that has been done. So I really want to challenge you with that. Um, the reality in the state of California is that most of our churches probably have fewer than 50 members. And, you know, trying to support a pastor, support ministry and the upkeep of the building pretty much taps the income that comes in. So when something else comes along, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And so um, you may not need the ministry or the, the, the assistance today, but you may down the road. And so I would encourage you to consider uh, supporting CMD. Let me read to you just a little bit of the report and then I'll be done. Um, for this quarter, the approximate contributions received but not yet distributed, and they will be here shortly uh, with, within the next few days based on the vote that we took yesterday and the balance we had already received. We have um, received about $8,100. Incremental fund was distributed through the fourth quarter and currently has, that's the other fund that I was just describing to you, has a zero balance. We have about $1,000 in an expense fund which handles mailings and stuff like that. Sister Stacy told you about the costs involved in just mailing things out. Um, so anyway, total in the bank is about $13,418, and 9,000 of that, we're gonna, we're gonna make that happen, 9,000 of that is gonna be distributed. And that's gonna leave us $4,418 in the bank. So I just want you to know that uh, the ministry is, is going strong, but we could use your help. Churches like uh, Mojave, uh, Reseda, uh, Valley Home, Olive Hill, Banning, and Hesperia um, have all received benefit of this type of uh, ministry. Um, and, and many of them have applied over and over to get more funds to meet the needs of major repairs uh, and things that need to be done. And so I encourage you, if you're... If you have questions about CMD, uh, come and see me. I'm not the director, but I know the phone number of the gal who's in charge, and I'll be happy to give it to you. I also extended this to those in attendance of the CMD meeting, that if you would like to know more about the CMD program, and you'd like for us to come out to your church or to your local association, I know there's a lot of people that aren't able to travel to the state meeting, um, we'd be happy to try and attend your local meeting. So if there's churches in your area that could use um, assistance and would like to participate in a ministry like this, we would be honored to come uh, to your local meetings as well. Um, total contributions received in 2023 were $37,828. But this is the number I want you to hear. Total paid out $90,480. 
So thank you again for your active and continued support of California Mission Development. Respectfully submitted, Kevin Parsons, Pastor Stacy Tyner, CMD Director. I move the adoption of this report. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion and second to adopt the CMD report. Is there discussion to this motion? I see none. All of those in favor of its adoption by uplifted hand, please. Hands down, any opposition? I see none, and it carries. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Uh, continuing in our, um, into our committee reports, we'll have the State Ladies Auxiliary Report, for which I will acknowledge Sister April Gonzalez. Good afternoon. From the California Cooperative Association, our State Ladies Meeting on March 26, 2024. Our 72nd annual meeting began with a congregational song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, led by Sister Amanda Lewis and accompanied by Sister Deanna Bailey on the piano. Sister Shannon Sandoval opened us up in a word of prayer. Sister Carrie Isereri welcomed the ladies to the Fresno Church. Sister Debbie Buttermore introduced our president, Sister Mindy Ellis. Sister Mindy shared her president's address, which was entitled, Why Are You Weeping? With the overarching theme, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Her text verse was from Lamentations 3, 22 through 26, which reads, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Sorry. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Some additional scriptures she mentioned were Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, chapter 15, verse 3, and chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. Sister Mindy started us off with a question asking us, ladies, why are you weeping? She reminded us that it is because of sin that we weep and the consequences of our sin as we struggle to faithfully follow the Lord. We need to remember that restoration and salvation comes from the Lord. She gave us the example of Mary Magdalene who was weeping over Jesus' body not being in the tomb. Just as Mary had no reason to weep over the empty tomb, we have no reason either because Jesus is here with us, alive and risen. We serve a risen Savior a Savior who supplies every need and answers every prayer. We can rejoice in that now and into eternity. After the President's address, Sister Stacy Hurd introduced the state goal. Our state goal was chapel builders. Sister Robin Wharton shared that they have had a busy year with some challenges along the way, including the loss of loved ones and health issues. She asked for prayers as the busyness continues as they strive to do the Lord's work. Sister Stacy then asked for any new pastor's wives and missionary's wives to come forward. There were no new missionary's wives, but there were six new pastor's wives. The new pastor's wives are, and I'm sorry if I butcher any of your names, Sister Araceli Serrato from Armona, Sister Whitney Kearns from Folsom, Sister Lehan Martin from Lompoc, Sister Lorenza Herrera from Carson, Sister Megan Crouch from La Habra, and Sister Morgan Childers from Pixley. We then opened for missionary wives to share what is on their hearts, and Sister Esther Theme shared that her and Brother John have been working alongside chapel builders for 18 years. God has been faithful and keeps meeting all their needs. Sister Esther asked for prayer for some health issues she has had this past year and asked for prayer as they continue to do this as long as the Lord allows. We then all joined in song and sang How Great Thou Art before opening for business by Sister Mindy. Our business portion. The meeting was called to order by Sister Mindy. There were 74 ladies present. There was no old business. Our new business. Sister Allison Howard asked that instead of using a flash drive to store all the treasure information, to be allowed to look in a different way to store all of it, such as a Google Drive or cloud. Sister Joyce Crouch made a motion to allow Sister Allison to do whatever she needed to find a new way to store all of our information, seconded by Sister Shannon Sandoval. Motion passed. Nominations were taken for the 2024 state goal. Motion and second was made to nominate Richard and Robert Wharton of Chapel Builders. Motion passed. 
Sister Debbie Buttermore made a motion that all eligible officers stay in position, nominations optional. Sister Esther Thiem seconded the motion. Nominations were taken for 2024 officers. Sister Mendy Ellis was nominated for president. The nomination was passed. Sister Stacy Hurd was nominated for first vice president. The nomination was passed. Sister April Gonzalez was nominated for second vice president. The nomination was passed. Sister Shannon Sandoval and Sister Amanda Lewis were both nominated for secretary. A vote was taken and Sister Shannon Sandoval was elected secretary. Sister Allison Howard was nominated for treasurer. The nomination was passed. Sister Ruth Browning was nominated for parliamentarian. The nomination was passed. And Sister Lisa Keeling was nominated for assistant parliamentarian. The nomination was passed. Her business portion was concluded. <coughs> Sister Amanda Lewis led us in our program slash workshop song, We Will Remember. Sister Mindy Ellis and Sister Tammy Schulte presented the new Every Morning Sisters podcast. Sister Stacy asked for prayer requests and dismissed us in prayer to our workshop. We were split up into three groups with workshop leaders, Sister Amanda Lewis, Sister Tammy Schulte, and Sister Mindy Parsons. Respectfully submitted, April Gonzalez, State Lady Secretary. Brother Moderator, I move your adoption of the Is there a second? Motion and second that the State Ladies Auxiliary Report be adopted. Is there discussion to this motion? If not, all in favor by uplifted hand. Hands down, any opposition? I see none, and it carries. Thank you very much. Uh, this time we'll have Brother um, Ed Robinson to come and uh, present the History and Archives Committee report. Amen. Proverbs 22, 28 simply state, states, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. I think that Jude writes in the New Testament, uh, and I think the third verse, that we should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. As we come to these meetings and we hear about the visions of pastors and the visions of missionaries going forward with the gospel message, seeing souls saved, churches established, God uh, sprinkles just a few people who go along with the charge that we've been given by the Lord to occasionally keep their eye on the landmark or the faith that's been delivered unto us to make sure that we're sticking to where we came from. Amen. It's important. So there's a few people that are just hardwired to be historical and, and look back and see uh, to remind, remind us of who we were, lets us know who we are and where we should be going. And so the History and Archives Committee met at 8 a.m. on March 27th, 2024 at the First Missionary Baptist Church of Fresno, the clerk's report was read and approved. The committee discussed old business, the following subjects. The new web page is being developed and will be up and running, we know, by next year and it'd be a lot more user friendly for people. The continued work of digitizing all of the historical records that were compiled by many of the brethren who've gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, the development of our historical library at the Olive Hill Missionary Baptist Church, the presentation of the plaque dedication to the Culifer family in honor of the work of Robert Bob Culifer. And I'm going to read what that says at the end of this. The committee discussed as new business the current work of compiling profiles of our current preachers and pastors the need of compiling the profiles of some of our great women in the work over the years, and the current need of compiling the records of our expanding Hispanic works in the state of California. We want to keep that history uh, alive and going as well. The committee added a Brother Ruben Hernandez and Brother Todd Martin to the work of being on the committee. The committee voted to retain our current officers until next year. We leave you with our motto, if we forget who we were, we no longer know who we are and do not know where we are going. 
And I'm going to read the plaque that was supposed to be presented to Sister Debbie Colifer uh, today at this meeting, but she's not able to be here. But the plaque says, The Cooperative Association of Missionary Baptist Church of California History and Archives Committee, dedicated to the memory of a faithful servant, Pastor Robert Bob Colifer, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For 31 years and thousands of countless hours of passionately and meticulously working on Baptist history, searching, sketching, and rightly dividing the histories of our true New Testament churches that paved the way we are all still being guided by today. We dedicate this to Sister Debbie Colifer to show our love for this godly man well done, thou good and faithful servant. Brother Moderator, I move for the adoption of this report. Okay, okay motion and second that we uh, adopt the report of the History and Archives Committee. Um, discussion to this motion? If not, uh, in honor of Brother Bob Colifer and the work that he did, I'm going to ask for a rising vote uh, in approval of this, if you would. Amen. You may be seated. If there are any in opposition, you may just simply raise your hand. I see none. <laughs> Amen. And it carries. Um, at this time, we, we do um, have the um, election of the History and Archives Committee. Brother Ed, who is currently serving in that committee? I see. Okay. Um, hmm. well, I'm sorry? Sean Hendricks. Okay. Um, is there a second to this motion? Okay. Motion and second that the current committee um, uh, continue with the addition of those who have been added. Discussion to this motion. If not, all those in favor by uplifted hand. Hands down any opposition, and it carries. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll call on Brother Rob Gonzalez to come and offer the Enrollment and Finance Committee report. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. This is my first time doing this, so please bear with me. And I have big shoes to fill, according to Brother Lohais. <clears throat> All right, that one fell. I'll try it again some other time. All right. The Enrollment and Finance Report to the California Cooperative Work of Missionary Baptist Churches. This is the Enrollment and Financial Report for this meeting held in Fresno, California, at the First Missionary Baptist Church on this date, March 27th, 2024. We had 60 associational church letters received. Meeting expenses were $6,760. Mission travel was $810. Youth fund was $505. History and archives, $75. Music, $75. Tuesday workshop, $650. Ladies auxiliary, $90. And the number of books requested were 167. And uh, I move for the adoption of this report, Brother Moderator. Is there a second? <laughs> Motion and second to adopt the Enrollment and Finance Committee report. Is there discussion to this motion? I see none. Uh, all those in favor of its approval by uplifted hand. Hands down any opposition. And it does carry. Uh, at this time, I will call on Brother Frank Palmer to come and give the clerk's report.
Just one second while I... All right, now I'm going to do this again. But I want everybody to look like you're happy to be here. Okay? Man, you guys had your work cut out for you preaching. <laughs> uh, I do miss uh, Brother Colifer. Uh, we started... Uh, ministry together. He went to Riedel in 1978. I was about two months later, went to Eureka, and uh, he worked in Eureka, so every Monday we would get together and cry on each other's shoulders. <laughs> and he would tell me how mistreated he was, so I tried to perk him up by telling him how mistreated I was, and uh, I've, I've always appreciated Brother Bob told a couple of people that after our meeting, I would always get a, a CD from him of about 1,500 pictures. Uh, so I always had plenty to choose from. Now it's whatever I take with my phone. So uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, another thing, I had a really nice report all ready and copied to, to bring with me, and it's still on my desk. <clears throat> and that's at home. So. You'll get the sketchy report. Uh, <laughs> but our balance at the end of, uh, of last year was $35,997 and change. Uh, we had debits of $7,873 and change. That's for printing of the minutes, uh, clerk and assistant clerk salaries, mailing expenses, uh, and all of those things. Income. Uh, from last year's meeting was uh, 7,460. Uh, the balance uh, that we started uh, a week ago, $40,705.92. Uh, and that's broken up into the following expense or following <laughs> accounts. Meeting expense, uh, $25,031. The missionary travel fund was $4,070. Uh, and, and just want to add that right now, we don't have any uh, missionary committee members from California. Uh, Brother Jimmy Nixon uh, moved to Texas. Brother Brian Langley moved to Tennessee. So right now, we don't have any uh, missionary committee members from California. So uh, that money will... Just hang tight until we get some. <clears throat> Youth account, uh, $2,208. History and archives, $7,922. Uh, music, $1,077. Uh, the workshop uh, was $395. Uh, for the moderator, I move for the adoption of this report. Is there a second to the motion to adopt? Motion and second for the adoption of the clerk's report. Any discussion? Amen. If, was, did I see discussion? No, okay. If not, all of those in favor by uplifted hand. Hands down, any opposition, I see none, and it carries. Uh, we then have the obligation to set the uh, clerk's expenses. Yes, brother. Oh, wonderful. Would you want it now? Yes, uh, I, I would suppose so. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll call on you when we get to that, I suppose. Thank you, though, brother. Okay. Um, so to set the uh, clerk's expenses, currently it's set at 3500 What would be the will of the body? Do we have a motion? I'm sorry? Okay, motion to... Um, set the clerk's expenses at 3500 Is there a second? Motion second. Any discussion to this? $3,500. Amen. Uh, Brother Kevin? I just personally think that everybody in this room has dealt with inflation at an astronomical rate over the last few years, and everyone here relies on the work of these brothers, yeah. and I'd just like to see us increase it. Do you have an, uh, an amount in mind? 
as the, the amount of increase. Would you like to make that an amendment? Yes. Okay, uh, motion to amend the motion to set the uh, clerk's, clerk's expenses uh, at $4,000. Is there a second to the amendment? Motion and second to amend. Any discussion to the amendment? Okay, if not, all in favor of the amendment by uplifted hand. Hands down, any opposition? I see none. We now have the motion as amended. Is there any further discussion or amendment to the motion? Okay. If not, then all of those in favor of setting the clerk's expenses at $4,000, would you please raise your hand? Hands down, is there any opposition? There is none, and it carries. Thank you. I appreciate your patience with me. I'll turn it over to Brother Jeff Ellis. Thank you, my brother. He's been my right-hand man. <laughs> That's a two-handed job for me. <laughs> I'm going to share this because this is funny. It's one of the funniest things I've ever read in my life, and I, I, I've shared it already with someone here, but where does a pirate go to get their hooks? I know it's corny, but it's, it, it suits me. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're far enough along in our agenda that we're going to be doing our election of our, where we're going to be going for next year and then our election of officers and our speakers. Uh, and then we'll close out with a scripture reading and dismiss till evening service at 7. So not too much more to do, but thankfully we've moved on pretty good and everyone's been doing a good job. I hope you all have been enjoying yourself and enjoying the fellowship and I just want to say I've been blessed to lead as your moderator the last two years, and I'm just thankful how well the, the, the messages have been tying together, and I was sharing with Brother Eric after this message this morning, Monday night, my opening scripture for my president's address was going to be 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18, but I rewrote it Monday night and changed where I went, and then he read that today in his message, so it's just been great how God's been working through all this, but I appreciate it his message this morning, and even Brother Ryan's last night. It really touched us. So, invitation for next year. You said you have one? The Church of the California Cooperative Association of Missionary Baptists, the First Missionary Baptist Church of Bellflower, would like to extend an invitation for the 2025 California Cooperative Association meeting to meet at the First Missionary Baptist Church of Bellflower on April 15th. Hearing this invitation, I would move for someone to make a motion to. I move that we accept the invitation of the First Missionary Baptist Church of Bellflower. Second. second. We have motion second. Yeah. All those in favor, show by your usual voting sign. Any opposed? I didn't give you a chance to discussion. We're going there. <laughs> I, I know it's a blessing to host. I did it for two years, and if I say I hosted it for all those years, I was a member there, uh, but you know, thankfully, President of Church stepped up this year and took care of it for this year, but appreciate the Bellflower Church stepping out in faith and doing that for us next year. Looking forward to the meeting there next year. So, moving on, the next item of agenda would be to uh, your election officers for the 2025 meeting. And I didn't include it on your, or does it have, the, it doesn't have the existing ones there. I guess you could, I'm the moderator, first assistant's uh, Brother Matt, second assistant's Brother Nick, our clerk, of course, is Brother Palmer, and our assistant clerk is uh, Brother uh, Eric Lohais, and then our parliamentarian, is that you, Brother Brothermore? You're first? Okay, Brother Brothermore is our, uh, and then our assistant, I think, is Brother Tom. Is that right? Oh, no, I think it's, who would you say, Phil? I don't think so, I think. I don't remember who it is. Yeah, I think that's Sacramento. I think it's Tom. You're not? Well, we'll have to figure that out. It's in the book. Yeah, the clerk's. I, I should have put that on the, the packet just so you'd have it. But, uh, and right now we have uh, 
music directors, we, we kind of team them up, and, we're, and but right now we have Brother Jared Keeling and Brother Randy Scott serving as our music directors uh, for this year's meeting. Uh, so uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, uh, elect uh, our moderator for next year first. <laughs> do, we, do we have a, 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 a and he, he can't even say Dev, David Buttermore because that's his first name too <laughs> so I, I'm, we're assuming he's uh, saying that so do we have a second for Brother Matt Buttermore we have a motion and second to elect Matt Buttermore as your moderator for next year's meeting all those in favor or discussion all those in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Then uh, who would you nominate for or elect for your first assistant moderator? We have motion and second to elect Brother Nick Lewis. Is there any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor of electing Nick Lewis show by the using photos and sign? Any opposed? So now we need to elect a second assistant moderator to fill that empty spot. Who would you have as a nominee? Brother Alex. Me? Yes, sir. Go back to the system. So it's a two year term, two year term, two year term, then you go back and start again? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other nominations? We have myself and Brother Ray Velasquez. Any other nominees? All right, well, I'm going to have to call, because I'm, I, I'm going to call my right-hand man to take the vote and take care of this. Amen. You've heard these nominees. We'll take them in the order in which they were nominated. Uh, all of those in favor. We'll take a test vote, and if we need to, we'll call on our Teller, I don't see him at the moment, but uh, there he is. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> All in favor of Brother Jeff Ellis, would you raise your hand, please? Okay, hands down. All those in favor of Brother Ray Velasquez. In the opinion of the chair, you have elected Brother Ray Velasquez. Amen. Amen. I would have gladly served, but it's... Nice to have others come in and do the same thing. So, who would you have to nominate for your church, for the clerk for the association? Brother Moderator, is it out of order for me to make a motion that we retain our clerk and our assistant clerk? No. I'll we, make that motion. Second. We have a motion and second to retain both our clerk and our assistant clerk. Any discussion? I'll just say I appreciate these two brethren. They do a great work for us getting this all together and putting it together and getting it to us. So all those in favor of electing our church, our clerk and our assistant clerk, which is those two sitting over there, if you don't know, raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Then uh, I would uh, entertain a motion for our parliamentarian or a uh, nominations for our, our parliamentarian. Do we ever figure out who's our assistant? Mike Olson. Mike Olson. Okay. Now I remember. For the moderator, may I make a motion that we retain our current parliamentarian and assistant parliamentarian? Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second to maintain uh, our parliamentarian, our assistant parliamentarian. Just so you know, it's Brother, Butter, Brother David Butterer as parliamentarian, and Brother Mike Olson as our assistant. <coughs> Any discussion? Retaining these two, show by the usual voting sign. Any opposed? Motion carries, which moves us to our music director and our assistant music director. Who would you have to be? Brother Moderator, I make a motion to retain our current director and assistant director. Second. We have motion and a second to retain our two. Any discussion? All those in favor say amen. amen. Any opposed? 
Moving on then. Wow, we're just moving right through this. We're going to get out of here early. You're going to have a lot of time for dinner. <laughs> All right. We have election of speakers for 2025 meeting. First one we need to take care of would be the evangelistic sermon for Tuesday evening. Who would you have as nominees for that position? We have Brother Ray Velasquez from Chico and Brother Zach Crouch from soon to be La Habra. Or he's there already, but any other nominees? All right, we'll take a, a, a vote in order that they were nominated, which will be Brother Ray Velasquez, and we'll do a test vote, see if I need to do a count here or get my tellers up here. So all those in favor of Brother Ray Velasquez. And all those in favor of Brother Zach Crouch, by the, by the vote of the committee or the body here, you've chosen Brother Ray, Ray Velasquez for your evangelistic sermon. Who would you have for your a, uh, a, uh, alternate for that? I nominate Zach Crouch. Do we have any other nominations for our alternate for our evangelistic sermon on Tuesday night. All those in favor of electing Zach Crouch, raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. We have our Wednesday morning sermon. Who would you nominate for our Wednesday morning sermon? Brother Clinton Childers nominated for our Wednesday morning do we have any other nominations for Wednesday morning sermon? All those in favor of electing Clinton Childers for Wednesday morning, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Motion carries. Moving on, we need an alternate for, the, for Brother Clinton Childers. <laughs> All those in favor of, or any nominations for an alternate for Wednesday morning? Well, just so, you, just so you know, brethren, who are here that can preach, if we don't have an alternate and he doesn't show up, we just call from the floor. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Brother Todd Martin. We have Brother Todd Martin nominated for our alternate for Wednesday morning. Any other nominees for alternate for Wednesday morning? Okay. All those in favor of electing Todd Martin as our alternate for Wednesday morning, raise your hand. Okay, praise the Lord. He's been chosen as your alternate. Am I going too fast? You guys getting this recorded? Okay. So then we would need to uh, elect a, a speaker for our missionary sermon on Wednesday evening. So I would uh, entertain nominations for our Wednesday evening. Yes. I didn't hear you. Brother Rob Gonzalez. Oh, Ed. Brother Hollins. Gilbert Hollins. I'm so sorry. Okay. All right. So, Brother, Brother Gilbert Hollins from Galilee Church. Okay. Any other nominations for our Wednesday evening missionary sermon? Brother Anthony Parker, any other nominations for our Wednesday evening missionary sermon? We have Brother Gilbert Hollins from Galilee and Brother Anthony Parker from Lancaster. Is there any other nominees? We'll take these in order as they were nominated. So we'll go with Brother Gilbert Hollins first. Show by raising your hand if we want to hear Brother Gilbert. Okay, hands down. All those in favor of Brother... Uh, Anthony Parker from Lancaster Show, by raising your hand. You've been you've elected Brother uh, Gilbert Hollins for our missionary sermon on Wednesday evening. 
Who would you have to be your alternate for Wednesday evening as missionary sermon? Any other nominees? You've been nominated. Uh, Anthony Parker is your assistant for Wednesday evening missionary sermon. Any other nominees? Okay, all those in favor of electing uh, Anthony Parker as the alternate for missionary sermon Wednesday night, raise your hand. Motion carries. He'll be your alternate. So then we have our Thursday morning sermon. Uh, entertain some nominees for that position. Yes, Brother Ray. You said Jim Crawl, right? Is that what I heard you say? Okay. And Sean Hendricks. Do we have any other nominees? I'd like to nominate Brother Ed Robinson from uh, Flagstone. Okay. Any other? So we have Jim Crawl from Keys, Sean Hendricks from New Beginnings, and Ed Robinson from Life Point, right? I said that one right. I think that's what it is. Any other nominees? We'll take a vote. Uh, I think I better have my teller. Since we have three, I'm gonna have my teller come up and and just to, just in case. I I can only count to five. <laughs> well, it's a lie because I did take I did take sign language. You think I have half the language, right? But you can count to thirty on one hand. Actually, harder than that. But all right. So we're gonna take these in order as nominated. So. Uh, the first nominee was uh, Jim Crawl from Keys for your Thursday morning sermon. All those shut up by raising your hand. The second nomination was for uh, Brother Sean Hendricks from New Beginnings. Show by the raising your hand. And we also had Brother Ed Robinson from Life Point as your last nominee, so show by raising your hand. You've elected uh, Brother Jim Crawl as your uh, alternate. That was alternate, right? That's what we were on? Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Okay, Thursday morning. Sorry. Sorry, I lost track of thought with all the... All right, so we have Brother Jim Crawl as your Thursday morning sermon speaker. So we'll need an alternate. So we entertain a motion for a nominee for a position of alternate for your Thursday morning sermon. Sean Hendricks. Brother Amen. Any other nominees? With Brother Sean Hendricks and Brother Ed Robinson. And since my teller's up here, we'll just do it again that way since you're here. All those in favor, we'll take these in order. Brother uh, Sean Hendricks, raise your hand. And then you know, the other nominee was Brother Ed Robinson. Raise your hand.
You've elected Bre Brother Ed Robinson as your uh, alternate for Wednesday, Thursday morning. Which that brings us to the end of our business for this afternoon. Yes. <coughs> Motion and second to give $2,500 to the Fresno Mission Baptist Church here uh, for their expense of the meeting. All those in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Well, before Brother Clint comes up, uh, we will be meeting back at 7 o'clock this evening. Uh, looking forward to the time as the Lord brings the message on that Brother Matt's going to share with us this evening. Um, but as, as I'm in my final moments of being moderator, I, I want to just say thank you. You've made my job easier. We've enjoyed the time of fellowship and enjoyed being part of this and serving you guys these past couple years this way. Um, but thankful, <coughs> thankful the opportunity to serve uh, this way. But I'm going to call our, our afternoon our scripture reading with Brother Clint Chillers from Pixley to come and share. The word of God, and he'll dismiss us in prayer, and you, you have extra time. That's what I, yeah, that's what I see. By yeah. my count, it looks like I have enough time for a sermon. So go ahead and open your Bibles. Uh, uh, gotcha. <laughs> see, see Todd, Brother Matt, he, he is, his, his open scripture reading last year was as long as my sermon was. Okay, well, cool. And, and, and he got elected this year. All right. So you're, you're going to do the same thing, right? No, they're going to be running for the alternate for next year for Wednesday morning uh, after this. Uh, amen. It's been a real blessing. I'm so excited to be here in this new capacity this year. It's a little different, you know. I'm used to being on the other side of this, uh, and which is important. Our congregants are extremely important. Um, I love all the fruit that has been gained from this. My goodness, uh, walking away with tools that are going to change everything for me personally. Four months old, so you know, I already came in knowing everything, and then I found out I don't know anything. So, uh, <clears throat> turn in your Bibles to First uh, Samuel chapter twelve. Great message this morning. Amen. All the messages have been great, all the scripture readings. Gratitude. This morning, I, I couldn't help but I just meditated on this thought that it, it takes consideration to be grateful. You have to consider what you're grateful for. Let me tell you something that's true. You have forgotten more blessings from God than you can account for today. He has blessed you more that you are unaware of than the ones that you can't even account for that you've forgotten because you are breathing and because you are here now. And that's a blessing in and of itself. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24, it says, only fear the Lord, revere him, respect him because he is God, amen, and serve him in truth, with all your heart, which would be obedience to the first great commandment. Amen. For consider how great things he hath done for you. If you need a reason to praise the Lord, you have plenty. Amen. Amen. And if we are considerate, then we will be grateful. Amen. Our great Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for blessing this meeting. Lord, for every aspect of it has just been wonderful. Lord, uh, we praise you and we give you all glory, Lord, for all that's transpired here. But Lord God, I uh, just thank you for each person that dedicated themselves to serve, those who have provided refreshments, those who have... Uh, been buzzing around the church here in Fresno and, and guiding people to the, the places they need to be, Lord. For those out in the pavilion who were watching and caring for our kids yesterday and entertaining them, and for the Clovis Church today, taking our children and entertaining them and caring for them as we are here uh, conducting your business, God. 
um, for each brother and sister that made the journey here, some from very far and you know, some from not so far, but each of us having to make that effort, Lord, and, uh, and what a privilege it is to uh, be able to assemble together in this fellowship in uh, cooperation under the same gospel message, Lord, uh, serving you, our living God. And Lord, I just pray that we'd carry all of this with us from here in this, uh, this time of meeting and fellowship, Lord, back to our home churches, Lord, and seek those souls in our cities, Lord, that are lost and dying, that we would consider the greatest gift that you've given each one of us and saving our, our souls eternally. Help us to be considerate of that and grateful to the point of serving you with our entire lives. We love you so much, Lord, and uh, we thank you for all of it. May you get all glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus, our King. Amen. Amen. Shortest sermon ever. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.